Yay, and we're back. This will be uh, part two for the uh, recording video because I, I didn't record any of that shit when we were on break. Um, so, you guys are ridden down to the crossroads. Uh, Captain Charity himself escorts you. Um, yeah. You guys arrive there and uh, dismount, and he's going to take the horses back and thanks you for your service. Anyone? Any, there you go. Um, thank you for your your um, your aid as well. It was uh, definitely a welcome sight to see your party as we left the caverns. A bit late, I imagine, though, judging by the wounds I saw you had all sustained. <laughs> uh, nothing that cannot be healed. Aye, if only we, all of my men had been so lucky. Well, I'll be heading back. If uh, you are ever passing out through this way again, feel free to stop by Little Rock. It'd be an honor to host you. Okay. We may do just that. And uh, he turns and leads the horses off. Uh, from here, he thanks to the use of the horses, he saved you a significant amount of time in your journey, but it's still going to take five days to the nearest town and then two days from there. To get to the capital of Agril, where the uh, headquarters of the Knights of the Agril Torn lie. Should we, um... Should we take our tests first and then move to the capital oh as charity said if you take them in the bar you get a free night and a hot meal yeah the bar like the bread or union bar which is closer in, right no in agro oh okay None stopping you from taking them now, though. You just don't get the uh, free meal. We gotta think. Well, what if we died on the way there? Died from monsters attacking, bandits okay. attacking. Is this monsters and? <laughs> Bandits attacking. Disease. Food poisoning. Struck poisoning by lightning. Food. Rocks Patrick, falling. Are you ready to do our tests, Patch? Uh, yeah. I think that's a no. <laughs> yeah. Let's have. Well, let's just go to the, the aggro first, then, I guess. Okay. Alright. You guys camp along the roads. I've already rolled encounters, and it's a peaceful journey. Uh, along the way, Haja finds a rock that looks suspiciously like Heath's face one night while camping. I take the rock. Okay, add one rock that looks like Heath's face to your, face to your inventory. Okay. The country roads you guys travel on down through are, you know, country roads take me home to the place I belong. Oh God, it's awful. It is awful. West of Grill. <laughs> oh. Patch. Hi. During our uh, travels, may I roll a nature? Why? So I can look for plants that might be good for making poison. Do you have proficiency in a poisoner's kit? Good question. I should check. Yes, I do. You're going to uh, roll your poisoner's kit using wisdom, please. Wait, what is... Oh, no. Okay. Oh, not bad. Yeah, you find uh, you find enough to make. Uh, well, what poison are you trying to make? What plants are you looking for? 
I'm looking for... Because there are specific poisons in the book. You know that, right? I did not know that because I never read the book. All right, let's talk poisons. I'm guessing they have hemlock, nelbane... Nope, I don't know what any of those fucking are. So, poisons come in the following four types. Contact, ingested, inhaled, and injury. The kind of poisons in the book are assassin's blood, which is ingested, burnt ether fumes, inhaled, crawler mucus, drow poison, essence of ether, malice, midnight tears, oil of taggot, pale tinctures, purple worm poison, serpent venom, torpor, Truth Serum, and Wyvern Poison. What one are you trying to make? Something that can go on the blade. How about that? An injury-based poison. Okay. <clears throat> well, if you wanted to make an injury-based poison uh, out of the book, unless you want me to spend a bunch of time making poisons of my own for you, or if you want to make some of your own that you could find... Your options are Serpent Venom, Wyvern Venom, or Purple Worm Poison, or Drow Poison. So, uh, are you a Drow? No, I guess I can't make any of those then. You can't make Drow Poison. Uh, if you wanted, you guys could, you could ask the party to uh, help you look for a giant poisonous snake to get the Serpent Venom. Or a Wyvern for the Wyvern Venom. Or a Purple mm. Worm for Purple Worm Poison. Never mind. I don't do you got to look up poisons and such before you start asking for, you know, uh, the extra things. I got to know what you want, you know? Okay. <laughs> uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So, uh, you guys carry on down these country roads. Take me home. I've already done this joke. Uh, there's a few merchants and travelers going around. And uh, if any of you were super interacting with them, like the bard, you could pick up some rumors from the area. All right, sure. Hey, traveling merchants and various other things. What are some rumors you can give me? Roll me a uh, insight. Or I'd allow a performance to overhear things while you're doing some performing for people on the road. Oh, I'll do that then. <laughs> Tell me about your uh, your performance. Oh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I could do this instead if it'll make it easier for you to understand what I'm doing. Well, anyway, the performance I was doing is, you know, um, I uh, play, um, I do a stand-up routine, and then I. Um, but I incorporate it into my, you know, magical stuff things. Uh, you know, like I'm distracting them from uh, whatever thing that I'm doing by telling a joke um, so that they don't see that I'm actually just, you know, um, switching the balls from the cups and so on. Okay. Uh, as you do these, you overhear a few things. Um, more people have been trying to figure out the name of the Arrow of Glass to get the uh, reward. <laughs> There's been uh, reports of uh, adventurers making up fake grand stories to try to, uh, you know, claim it's true to make money. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. You hear about... Uh, groups of goblins in this area that have been holding people up at the crossroads. Uh, you hear that a green dragon has made its lair in a deep forest to the south. And... Uh, oh, you also hear the uh, rumors that there's been a... Uh, the, a hag in the swamp to the northwest that's uh, been kidnapping children from uh, nearby towns uh, places. Let's see if we oh, can take on a hag, right? Oh. You got a, a 17, right, as well? <laughs> uh, 
another settlement village uh, to the west by the name of uh, New Tottingham has been plagued by uh, nightly attacks of undead. Mm. No one knows where they came from, and the undead don't seem to be being controlled by anything. Uh, and the last thing the merchants share with you is that um, one of them swears that uh, when he was coming through New Tottingham, it wasn't only undead that were uh, was with them, but also uh, fey and uh, devilish creatures, too. A whole slew of uh, creatures not normally native to this plane. Hmm. Interesting. So, to recap, it was um, rumors of... Uh... Uh, era of glass, why it's called that, and people finding that out. Era of glass. Mostly people, uh, was, pretenders, um, pretenders, like acting like uh, they were causing it or wanting to get involved in it, or and then uh, adventurers also making up lies in order to try to claim rewards uh, from having figured out the 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 meaning. And then, um, to the southwest was a hag, presumably. Northwest. To the south Northwest. is a uh, dragon that has made its lair. Green... Dragon lair. Uh, then it was uh, Northwest hag kidnapping children. Um, then you said something about West. Uh, that's the village of Tottingham. New Tottingham. That's uh, being assaulted by extraplanar creatures. Uh, as a note, uh, it would take an insight roll to figure out which uh, ones of these are false and just, you know, grandstanding. As well as, uh, yeah, uh, the Red Door Union will pay for any um, uh, rumors it hasn't heard already. If you bring it to uh, any of the inns. Uh, Ten gold per rumor is the uh, pay. Oh. Oh. Extra planar shit is what I'm going to put in. There was one more you said. Goblins around the area. Yep. Oh, right. But yeah, the goblins. Holding uh, people up at the crossroads. Which, um, you guys killed. Uh -huh. Oh, we did. Well, so we can strike that one off. Um... Um, if I, like, uh, they said we need to roll an insight to see whether or not any of these are true or false. Yep. Uh. I'll roll an insight. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've heard tell of a warlock out in the swamp that way, meaning that it's probably an elderly warlock that people are just making rumors about in regards to the hag. Um, a female witch uh, who doesn't like company a lot. Uh, sometimes people will go to her to try to seek knowledge and things like that. Uh, the dragon of the southwest is obviously embellished. It's likely only a wyvern or uh, a young dragon. It's unlikely to be a big one this close to civilized areas. Uh, the new Tottingham one, that is too out there to not be true. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And uh, you would also infer that because other people are just, you know, making up crazy shit about the era of glass, that it's going to be harder for your story to be believable. And you also still don't know if that was even an, an actual true cult or anything yet, to be honest. <laughs> you know that they're doing freaky shit. Uh, you also infer that Solstice had... Well, actually, uh, maybe I should just tell you this, Serene. Um... You haven't told anyone that you saw a thing in the mirror yet. I did. did I, I, that, I, I, it was more Haja that saw than I did. I, I guess I saw it too. I was up there. You, yeah, you and Haja were the ones who saw it. That has not been communicated to any of the knights or any of the party members. I need to remind you both of that. I don't even, like, the thing is, like, because I had thought that it was just Haja that had seen it and not me. And I honestly, at that point, <laughs> uh, had just so... moved. So did not have my notebook. So if do you still by any chance have the description on hand so I can write it down? We're gonna see if Egg did. 
you saw something you're not sure what you saw solstice in the heat of battle okay. egg egg you might want to tell the party at some point what you saw in the mirror a boulder right <laughs> well that's a plot point i don't think we're point. ever gonna know that's a plot point I, that's I, never I, coming no, back. I, I'll, I'll, be on, I'll, I'll be honest. I knew that plot point was lost the moment. You said that Egg saw someone in the mirror. Only Egg was the one that saw it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I you didn't mention my name when you said, oh, you see something in the mirror. Ah, uh, well, I suppose I'll uh, I'll revisit it at some point. <laughs> Either way. Yes, so. Uh, yeah, Heath, it's, you don't... since. Haja doesn't remember what he saw and hasn't told anyone. Uh, you do not know if uh, what you dealt with was even a real cult or if it was, as uh, Archerson said, just pretenders, like, fucking uh, things up. They were definitely murderous, but uh, it's hard to tell if there was any actual, you know, real threat beyond. I mean, the ritual never completed, never finished, and it's clear that the uh, minions you guys were fighting that you give as eyewitness didn't know what they were doing uh, with it at all. Mm-hmm. So, it's hard to tell if that, like, if anything was going to ever go anywhere from like it. Like, they just knew, like, the basic gist of it, and not really the inner workings of what really made the ritual what it was. Exactly, which means that Tattoo Guy might not have known what was going on, or he might have just not told the minions, or who knows. Sadly, with him not here, uh, and there being very little evidence remaining there... Um, it's uh, just a little bit of a dead end. Meaning that uh, you're not certain how believable your story is going to be. Unless you can uh, uh, I mean, make concise I mean, arguments. In, 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 the, in the end, the reward is for finding information. We don't have any information, so we don't really have anything to offer anyway. Uh, oh, you do. You still have those correct. two medallions, which you were going to get paid for. That is a definite... Yeah, that is I mean, something. Yeah. yeah. Two? Yeah, no, that, 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 is, that, is, that is not... I thought that we had not... three. Oh yeah, we do have three from the yeah. third one we picked up, right? Yeah, yeah the one that I... A I third heard, wasn't heard. expressly offered, meaning that you'd have to convince accounts receivable to give you a reward from that one. Oh. Hmm. Well, that, that we can do. But either way, main point is uh, that's not related to the arrow glass. That is related to something different. Yep. All right. Well, we have at least something that we might be able to do later on. Go to the village of Tottingham. And we can also turn in that rumor, I guess. We can also... I, 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 so, with the goblins, that's, we, we, we turn that into the... Uh, the Red Dorian, the... Correct? Uh, uh, Red Door. Yep, you turn that... You, your information about the goblins into the Red Door Union. Anything involving Union, the uh, glass shit, you're going to have to talk directly to the... Um, the knights. I'm going to... Thorn. Hmm. All right. A few more days down the road. And you guys are beginning to see the capital of Agril, which is unimaginably named Agril. So like New York, New York? Very it much so. lays out in the distance uh, amidst some rolling hills a dirty beacon the citadel that's ahead of you i'm trying to pull up my map for it firstly has a massive sprawling shanty town surrounding its dour gray walls those of you who have been here before, this is known as the Shadow Sprawl. It is a plague town that exists outside the walls of Agril. Sadly, two roads, the only two that go in to the city, both lead through the heart of the Shadow Sprawl. There are two gates into Agril, one to the west that will take you guys longer to get to, and you'll have to wait longer in lines to be let into the city, and one to the northeast that goes through the heart of the Shadow Sprawl, the exact center of it, and travels the longest through it before reaching the gate there. Uh, the 
knights are more willing to let people through very swiftly to avoid transmission of the deadly illness that uh, racks through the shadow sprawl. The shadow sprawl is known such for the plague and the disease that has been called the darkening. Um, contracting it, uh, it's not airborne, and it's uh, not transmission through bite or anything else that you'd expect. Allegedly, the shadow and the darkening, it's called both those things, strikes people at entirely random. For no reason, it seems. It can strike anyone rich, anyone poor. When that happens, those people are ejected from aggro. The darkening is a unique illness to this area. It does not affect people outside or far away from the capital of aggro. Once you catch it, you're exiled, and generally that means you build a shack outside the walls in the Shadow Sprawl. Or you find one that's I mean, unoccupied. I mean, what 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 sort of symptoms happens with it? Like, do you die from it, or what? Uh, you do die eventually, yes. So the start is a darkening around your eyes, similar to uh, heavy bags after several nights of not sleeping. From there, oh. that... Uh -huh. So, like, that lady, that was uh that was going to go check out the um very much so she could have been in the early stages of it hmm. or she could just not have slept either way it spreads from the eyes there until a rapid aging of the body begins to occur as uh, whatever race has contracted it slowly gets grayer paler and just kind of darker as if they were constantly in the shade uh, they become more lethargic. Uh, emotion starts becoming harder around them until they eventually just kind of give up. One more thing of note is that this strange illness has a secondary effect. Because everything kind of slows down and you become lethargic and such, so do do things such as your nerve endings, your natural healing process and such. Meaning wounds that you take, such as stubbing your toe or getting a cut on your arm can take, instead of the normal, like, you know, days to heal, can take years to heal where that pain is constant and always, meaning that they're more likely to get infected and then cause further problems down the line that just lead to a whole cornucopia of just issues that spiral in until the afflicted victim passes away under the weight of either too much pain, too much illness, too much sickness, or whatever. It's only local to this area. Well, clearly, Patch, the Skeksis are to blame for the darkening. <laughs> so, those are the two roads in. They are known as the High Road to the High Gate and the Low Road to the Low Gate. The High Gate is the one that uh, avoids most of the Shadow Sprawl. The Low Gate goes right through it. It's easier and faster to pass through the Low Gate, but you have to go through more of the Sprawl. And it's faster, it's longer... Uh, but you pass through less of the sprawl going through the um, the high gate. You guys can currently see the rest of the city beyond the sprawl. This just horrible dark area of uh, shacks and things. And it's gray, as I said, dour citadel uh, walls. Because this was originally a citadel castle town. That uh, grew past its walls. Uh looks strange among the hills the whole area appears to be just naturally it's very well hidden <laughs> with the uh the way that the rolling hills and general forests and such are um the tallest of the buildings from here is uh the school of legend which is uh literally what it's called the school of legend is the premier uh wizards college in all the uh, all of Hellmelon, uh, 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 the the Torn Spire. Uh, the Torn Spire was the former headquarters of the Knights of Agril Torn, and it is a very large castle defensive structure in smack dab in the middle of the city. Um, now it is the seat of government of the city. 
the Spire of the Torn is uh, the derogatory name that the knights gave it when they were evicted from it by their former leader. Uh, those are the two major like landmarks that stand out even this distance away. So what'll it be? High or low? I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like getting sick. I also don't feel like getting the plague. Same. <laughs> Everyone looks at I think Solstice we're too late for you, Aja. <laughs> I did yeah. do patch. Cough, cough. Oh, I'm sorry. There is uh, one one actually uh, thing I had forgotten to mention. Uh, tieflings have been discovered to be immune to this disease. They cannot catch it. Oh. Like STD or... uh, as do Asimar. Neither race can catch this disease. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Well, too bad we're not, you know, mostly. Well, I guess that means that we can, that, you know. That we... That Solstice could go through the low gate and start preparing roofs for us. Uh -huh. Is it the low gate that is... Faster, yes. Faster? Because they just want they want people who are uninfected to get into the city as quick as possible. You're subjected to a quick search, making sure that you don't have the darkening, and then you're allowed in. It's also the favored way of thieves, criminals, and smugglers. Haja, you would know that being a rogue. Yes, I know this. Exactly. So you'd wish to send a woman into a den of... You don't know that Solstice, that's a den or that's a smuggler weight. That's only Haja, who knows? Of course he'd know. Uh, Haja, also the Shadow Sprawl is where the city's uh, majority of crime lurks. It's a particularly uh, good strategy to smuggle things, people uh, in and out of the city by pretending like you've got the darkening in the city, so this way they eject you out pretty damn quickly, and then to get back in, you just pretend to be someone coming up the low road uh, who does not have the darkening. So, uh, it's uh, pretty easy to smuggle shit in and out, and there's a just very vibrant crime network in and around the Shadow Sprawl. Hooray for crime! I mean... Who said Why do you just go hooray for crime? I don't know what you're talking about. A well-armed group huh. like yours is unlikely to get jumped by anyone uh, heading through the Shadow Sprawl. Unless, like, okay, someone's so... particularly desperate. I mean, so, if I were to go through the quicker route, do you think that is wise? I mean, what's what's wrong with the, with the quicker route if you're immune to the disease? I am <sighs> Okay. <laughs> so do you wish for... Okay, my question is then, do you wish for me to take the quicker route to get our rooms prepared? If you're comfortable with it, it would be a boon if you could go in and get everything prepped for us so that as soon as we get in there, we have everything set and we're able to go start trying to get our funds. If you're not comfortable with it, don't feel pressured to do it. You can simply travel with us. Uh -huh. Oh, I think I could do it. No regret. If I come into any cr any trouble, I'm sure they will regret it. All right, Solstice is gonna head down the low road, and uh, Kerrigan and company up the high road. Who wants to go first? Well, we have to queue separately. Well, they're two different roads. Like one is to the east, and one is to the north. They're a couple oh, miles meant, apart. Oh, so okay, so you meant who am oh, I, I running mean, first? The three of us. Go, 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 Sarim first. This is just me. All right, Sarim. Yes. You begin walking amidst towering shanties that have been stacked on top of each other. 
creating very, very narrow passageways on the road here, sometimes even entirely blocking the road. It would appear that the city's guard or the watch doesn't do much to upkeep, maintain, or keep this area clear. The only uh, ones that do are the occasional merchant that you'll see coming by with their route of guards uh, in their caravan, sweeping aside the sick and the uh, uncleanliness of the road away. You see that happen a few times. Despite the bright morning sun, it feels darker in here with all these towering, leaning shacks and a good solid knock to any of the support structures you worry could bring down half of the Shadow Sprawl. You made it about halfway through. What's your passive perception? As you're walking through 15. these... Fifteen. There are things. You begin noticing. People are are noticing you for sure. Those with the darkening clearly, some of them in the very late stages where their skin is almost as pitch black as night themselves, meaning you're only able to recognize their race by their various heights. A stocky one there with no beard, it must be a dwarf, uh, very far into the stages. A halfling coughs and hacks up a lung in a corner. Hey! Tiefling, hey! You hear called from uh, one of the nearby alley alleyways. Yes? You glance over, and the person standing there uh, appears to be a uh, large hobgoblin. You, uh, you looking to make a quick bit of cash? No. No, no, hey, hey, shh, shh look. He kind of, like, glances about. I'm not asking you to do anything illegal. Holds a jar out to you. Like, shakes it in the alley. It's empty. There's nothing in the jar. Come on, you can help a lot of people. I... I, um... What... What would exactly go inside that jar? You know... Uh... Spit, piss, cum, blood, whatever you want to put in it. Make cures oh, these for these creatures. people. You're immune, right? Make cures for them all. I am sure that that is where if well, yes, I am immune, but I'm sure 50 that gold the, pieces this per has jar. Been okay. Now, how am I to know? It has already. Uh, it has likely already been attempted to cure these people of that with any sort of. So what you are trying to do is give false hope to these people so that they will give you more money and you make the profit. Lady, they're going to well, die I anyways. Just... Wouldn't it be better to die believing in something? Plus, they could give a little bit of money in the process. They're not going to... Can... What are they going to do with it? They're dying. He again waggles the jar in your direction. 50 gold per jar. I can buy... Five jars from you, right now. I do not believe that anything under Ravana Sun should be given on such falsehood. Well, come on, lady. The sun doesn't fucking shine here. This is shadow sprawl. Bitch. And he spits on the ground and takes a step back into the shadows. You make it a little bit further, and uh, you find your way blocked as a woman uh, rushes out. She has no uh, sign of the darkening, and she has a wrapped bundle in her hand, and she says, Please wait! Wait! Lady Tiefling, I recognize those uh, vestments! The goddess of the sun, Ravana, please heal my baby! She holds out the bundle towards you. The child is pitch black. You can't even discern gender. Um, would I have any knowledge as to whether or not, like, any sort of healing spell or anything would have been attempted to... to I mean, of course it would have. They would have attempted that when the, the disease, like, became so widespread. Possibly, but also there might just be too many people to heal. 
mm. meaning that it might work, but the cure can't be, you know, passed about. You sadly don't know much about this disease yourself. You only know about it in the area. You're a fair newcomer to these parts, aren't you? Yes. You have probably gone through the Shadow Sprawl before since you did start in Agral, but uh, you started, you went out through the high road, so this is new. Okay. Um... You can try something. Yes, I will cast a um, let's see. I guess a healing word. What word do you pick and how do you do so? How do you heal this baby? I invoke my goddess's name um, and hope that she can bring light into the child. You watch the spell coalesce and roll, roll for healing as it uh, wraps around the baby comfortingly. It wraps around the baby comfortingly, and you're not certain, but you swear you could have seen its skin get a little bit lighter, maybe for just a second. The mother collapses in tears, holding her child and thanking you profusely, kissing your boots and clinging to your pants. As she does, more people take notice of the spell you just cast. People with pale and dark skin are kind of coming out of the woodwork now, out of their shanties out of the alleyways there must be 50 no a hundred of them kind of now milling about the area lady tiefling help us you hear them begging and calling i'm afraid i only have so much uh reserves of magic i cannot help you all at this time they but i hmm? carry on but I will pray to the, my god, my my goddess Ravana, that she will shed light onto you, and that she can ease your pain. And when I can, I will try to help as best as I can. Roll me a persuasion, please, and thank you. Mm. Ugh. She's lying! She only wanted to heal the child, not any of us! <laughs> what a bitch! You hear called out. Some of them, uh, you know, are still begging for help, crowding around you. You find it difficult to move. Uh, you can still do so, but you're going to have to start pushing through this crowd of people grasping onto every part of you. Some of them are angry as well, and uh, not everybody is trying to touch you for good reasons. As you feel thing people trying to grasp a hold of your cloak, your coat, your armor, your things... They're surging around you. You're, what are you going to do? There's people for begging for help, people cursing your name, calling you selfish. The mother with the child has made a disappearing act as she, you know, um, you can't see her anymore in the crowd. She didn't want to get trampled, so she stood back up. But uh, you healed one leper, and there's uh, hundreds more of them now begging for miracles. I knew this was going to happen. Um... You can push through them without needing to attack any of them. None of them are, have the strength to stop you from doing anything you want. They're all very ill. Okay, I mean, I, I will push through, but I've also cast, like, a, a minor illusion to make, like, uh, maybe, like, the sound of, like, a deafening roar to kind of startle them back. Oh, yeah. They fucking run. The second the roar happens, the majority of the crowd runs. Most of them screaming, cursing right, your I'm name, gonna... and... Uh, you know, things like that. Those who are too sick to run or uh, too ill remain clinging and in your way, but you manage to just easily kind of push them off as you carry on towards the gate. Reaching the low gate isn't difficult, and there's a crowd of people just generally outside of here lounging around the gate uh, on their houses, their... Uh, things like that. Out front is a squadron of ten people, all of them wearing uh, various 
styles of the same stamped armor, that of a sword reaching up towards the heavens. And I can show you this, what this looks like in the uh, Hasalia IC chat. It is not okay. the symbol of the Knights of the Agril Torn that they wear, but it looks like that they are the ones guarding the gate. Ba -ba -ba. It is going to be in Hasalia IC chat. Give me a moment. There it is. Okay. <laughs> is all on Isn't their armor and Isn't that also kind of how you almost event. described my sigil? <laughs> uh, yours is a spear. Oh, is it a spear? Maybe yep. I wrote that wrong. Let me see. No, I think I did write spear. <laughs> yours is a spear piercing through the sun like it's raised. That is a sword raised up to the heavens almost in defiance. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Uh, they see you coming, and uh, they say, Tiefling, coming through! The gates creep open. You note immediately the knights form a protective half-circle. Uh, well, sorry, they're not knights, they're the city guard. And they gesture for you to hurry up behind them, Serene. Okay. The gates are opening. Uh, a lot of people who are sick and ill kind of notice that and begin coming forwards. You rush forwards ahead of them, get behind the half circle, and uh, as the gates are closing behind you, you can see that the guard is getting a little violent with the sick people that are trying to, you know, beg for help and such. The gates slam shut behind you soon. You find yourself in a bright city. The contrast between the dark of the Shadow Sprawl, the brightness of the capital of Agril is shocking. <laughs> the walls outside were in uh, heavy disrepair, but all the buildings in here are uh, well kept for the most part, if a little bit, you know, tacky. <laughs> the majority of them are built straight out of stone uh, with uh, mud thatch roofs or, you know, solid sturdy wood. It appears as if everything in this city from where you can currently see was built with a perspective of defense. There's a okay. small checkpoint here, and after a quick search of your person, the guards clear you to head further into the capital of Agro. Uh, since you have been here before, the city is divided into several districts, and you'll need to give me a moment. Uh, so, there is uh, b -b 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 Honey Green, which is the nearest district to your west, and that is a, a district with a very large halfling community in it. Uh, the buildings there uh, actually are mostly under the ground of Agril, as the halflings build sturdy entrances and stone uh, structures, but prefer living in cozy environments just barely underneath the ground. <laughs> the area that you're in right now, the district, is called the Fair, and uh, this place is where merchants are uh, coming through that uh, don't want to head all the way to the other side of the city to smoke market. Uh, will begin, you know, showing their wares and things like that. Ba -ba -ba. What is it that you're looking for in the city, I suppose I should ask you? I mean, First. I think I'm heading to the the Smiling Mimic to procure rooms for us. The Smiling, mimics, with, the smiling mimics within the fair, as are most of uh, other taverns and uh, entertainment uh, sources in Agro. So you head over to the Smiling Mimic. And, uh, you know, as always, this adventure bar is rowdy and enjoyable. Music plays in the back. And uh, you... It's nice to be in familiar territory again. What are you up to? You want to procure rooms? Yes. And the way to do that is to speak to the bartender, huh? Okay. I guess I will go to the bar and... Uh, 
uh, try to get uh, their attention. Or her, is it? It's the woman, right? Uh, Today it's a it's a guy with a thick brown a apron, and he's got a very heavy mustache matching the same color of his apron. And uh, he spots okay. and says, "I, how can I help you?" Uh, yes, uh, me and my travel companions, they are actually entering through a different route. Um, we are looking to have, uh, uh, to do our, our, uh, uh, tests, our exams, to level up. Um, and are looking for rooms and, uh, a meal. Aye, I'll set you up then. You, uh, we'll get you your meals beforehand. You, you're members then, yeah? All of you? Yes, all of us are members of the uh, of the union. What names? Um, we have uh, Carrigan, Lord Carrigan, um, Keith, uh, Twinkle Bottom, Lord Carrigan, uh, Carrigan Adams, maybe. Uh, not familiar with either name. Just startled. We don't very get merry uh, lords in the adventure in Union. I don't think he really calls him himself that. I'll write down much. Kerrigan Adams then. Yes, sir. Um, and then there's Heath Twinkle Bottom. He is our bard. Um, and Haja, our rogue. Can I am Solstice? Right. Good. Uh, what team name? We are team Not One. Got it. All right, go on, take a seat. Uh, if you need a drink or anything, just uh, signal me over. Otherwise, uh, food, uh, we'll get something whipped up for you. I thank you kindly. You're quite welcome. <clears throat> All right, and I guess you settle in to wait for the others? Yes. Meanwhile, those of you taking the Highgate, you have a very different experience. So you head up the high road... The first thing that you note is that it is literally named the High Road because it stretches over the majority of the uh, Shadow Sprawl. Oh, I thought you meant because everyone's literally high, they're just smooth. <laughs> uh, a f few, you know, hundred feet into the Shadow Sprawl, the road begins lifting up as a bridge. Houses still try to cling to the building, uh, to the roadway, but look like they're in danger of falling off and such like that. And this is a, uh, uh, a much less popular place, it seems, to build. Those that do build shacks build it fairly far down below as the uh, bridge manages to rise up to a whopping 200 feet above the Shadow Sprawl. It arcs down about halfway beginning to creep back down all the way uh, towards where the high gate is, which is, again, a little raised above. The walls here on this side are much sturdier, thicker, and more defensive than the walls uh, uh, down the low road, uh, considering of how the walls here have to be significantly higher. <clears throat> From your guys' perspective, while walking the bridge, you can see the entirety of the uh, city of Agril down below you. It's clear that this bridge must have been installed after the city was no longer needed as a major defensive force. As, uh, this would be a nightmare to try to defend. Unless they knocked it out. Mm. Sorry, I need, a, I need a sip of water. <clears throat> From this perspective and the way that it is, you're able to tell that the western half of the city is upraised <clears throat> than the other half making all of Agro look, from your perspective right now, as if it were on a heavy slant. Uh, your guys' entry into the city is entirely boring. It's very fucking boring. You wait hours and hours in lines and queues of other merchants and uh, people trying to take this way, people who don't mind the extra wait to get into the city, which is... The majority of people, as Solstice will likely tell you after her experience walking through the low road, huh? <laughs> um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, in that wait time, Heath, you hear a couple other unsettling rumors. Uh, it's thought 
that uh, tieflings are currently uh, in the upper echelons of society thought to be the ones who have caused the darkening. And as such, uh, there has been discussion amongst the, um, the lords of the city about an exile and uh, eviction of all tieflings in city limits. Uh, you note, although from your knowledge, Asimar being immune, um, they are not included in this potential eviction. Uh, you also hear a few more rumors that a couple of the local gangs uh, have been uh, getting very violent with each other, and it looks like a whole gang war could occur any day in the streets of Agril. Uh, one more thing you note, is that uh, overhearing a few residents of Agril looking to get back into the city talking, you discover that the Knights of the Agril Torn aren't welcome here, despite having their headquarters here. As they, uh, you hear these residents bitching about of how the Knights never help anything within the city, and like they could solve so many problems if they just fucking helped us. The guard are overworked and uh, stretched thin throughout to do anything about the shadow sprawl and uh the residents are complaining that the knights don't do anything to you know finally kick uh the shadow sprawl out of here like just burn it to the ground things like that the knights don't do anything to enforce law and order within city limits you've learned mm. eventually you guys manage to get through the gate uh, all of you are thoroughly searched. Is anyone carrying anything that would be considered contraband, such as poisons or anything? Uh, question. What happens if I have a poisoner kit? It's not illegal to have the kit. It's illegal to, uh, ha like, bring any into the city. Ah. Uh. So with just the kit, they just kind of sh shrug, and you're able to, like, just go, it's alchemist supplies. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well. Is a violin considered a contraband? No. Is it considered part of a band? I got really tiny there for a moment. Uh, you're fine, Martin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys managed to get through uh, unmolested. Ooh. And uh, you guys, the area that this uh, lets into is a uh, smoke market it is the uh Wait. what are you showing a map or something no i didn't have time to finish setting okay. up the map oh, for you guys today sadly i have it i have my version of it in my notebook all drawn up but i don't have the uh the version i was working on online done yet um so you guys oh, okay. let out into smoke market a market known for its name from uh the many many street vendors which sell food here uh, it also has a heady, constant scent of uh, smoke that goes through it, as there's a lot of incense shops and things like that. Uh, it's really, really good for buying uh, wizarding supplies as well, hence, again, the name Smoke Market. The Legendary College. Sorry, the College of Legend. Uh, School of Legend. Jesus fucking Christ. The School of Legend sits in this district. That's not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. What are you guys up to? Uh, I mean, we're going to just head straight to the Smiling Mimic. All right. That yeah, was to... my understanding. Is that it? <laughs> you head to the tavern, and it took a total of uh, four hours longer is how long you've been waiting, Solstice. Uh, before you see the party come in, the uh, large hearthstone mimic occupying the center of the bar uh, turns and affixes them all with its grinning gaze. Oh, man. I was running out of puns. It's oh, been a man. nightmare for the other two. For the other two? Yeah, he's been giving them puns nonstop this whole time. 
Well, they got to be eventually. <sighs> but then they st the others in the queue started looking at us funny because they thought they were being abusive to their child. So I had to explain to them that no, they're not a gay couple. We're just adventurers, and I'm actually a halfling. And it's very insulting that you think that I'm I'm a child. And then everyone stopped giving a shit. But um, I, I stopped telling puns because apparently they didn't like it because they gagged me. I'll let you tell one more pun. Go ahead. I'm sure you have one. Hmm... Well, I, I mean, g give me, give me, give me something to work with here. What, what's, what's my, what's my motivation? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hey, aren't the gentleman that beat you up last time? Oh, where? <laughs> Made you look, I guess, huh? <laughs> yes. A hot meal is placed out in front of all of you. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I ask, uh, I assume it's a waitress that deliver these? Uh, yes. How can I help you? Uh, I'd like uh, a round of uh, a simple ale for everyone at the table, please. Simple ale? Uh, let's see, there's five of you, so uh, one silver. I hand a silver. She takes it and, uh, you know, heads uh, heads to get you your drinks. There, I said I'd buy the first round. If we survived, yes. We survived. We did. <laughs> Yay. In in some sort of fashion. What do you mean? We feel fine. Wow, that's our arrest. Hey, we survived. We, we, we made it back. We didn't even lose anything, like a body part or anything, even. That's true. I mean, there you are. Being so positive. Optimistic. Well, what can I say? I'm half the size of everyone else. That means that uh, I... The part of me that would be filled up with all the gruffness and all the um, depressing stuff, it's not, it, it doesn't, it, uh, I don't have room for it. Unlike all of your tool people. And here I thought everything would just be proportional. I guess not. The Red Door Union, as a note, seems free of well, any of the, uh... I mean... Thinking about what's in my pants is definitely not proportional, if you know what I mean. Wink. The smiling mimic uh, seems to be free of all of the tension and depression clinging on to the outside of the city. And uh, mostly in here are adventurers looking to have a good time and drink. It's a very boisterous experience, far different from what you heard outside the city, Heath, and going through it, and far different from your experience in the Shadow Sprawl. Serene. Everyone here is happy, laughing, sharing drinks together. There's uh, people of all races, all creeds, all disciplines, just enjoying themselves and having a good time. So, uh, do we, like, sit in a circle? Like, yeah. how, how do we... You're currently around do... a circular table. I mean, I was, I was asking the party if we're going to just sit in a circle... Yeah, sit around a circular table. And just, like, like a ritual, do all of our uh, exam stuff. Huh, I wonder. If we all do our things at the same time, will we all be in the same place? No, I don't think so, because I would have to go to the place. It's like going to different classrooms. Uh. Different locations. Mine actually sent me back to the main temple in Tanskaran. The waitress... I see, I see. Putting down your drinks in front of you says, Oh, uh, if you all take it at the same time, it just means that the loner souls will be in your guys' bodies. 
all at the same time here. It's why we like to have them here, so the loner souls don't get up to too much trouble and can get, a, uh, you know, a bit of uh, some enjoyment. Stuff that they don't get uh, normally. Namely, being able to drink and eat. An art tab? Nope, they pay for it themselves. Kind of, they kind of you, I they guess. have... What are... They have their own methods of payment. What are loner souls? Uh, prisoners who are executed and then uh, seeking to redeem themselves so they can be reincarnated. Uh. Huh. Execute for what? Oh, that depends. Depends on where we get them from. It's so like a work program. Me, you're telling us that every time we want to level up with you, our soul is removed and replaced with the soul of a previously executed convict? Yes. Are they all convicts? Um, Have there been instances of someone giving up their loner soul just to get a better chance at life? Oh no, that would be illegal. Oh. Uh, I assure you, all the convicts are vetted very thoroughly by the Red Door Union uh, before their executions and uh, offered um, a, a very lucrative deal with us um, for service based on a certain number of years. They're under very strict instructions about what they can and cannot do, and uh, besides, the, the, here they are under our supervision, correct? It's only if you wish to level up out uh, and far and about that uh, you might come into difficulties. And even then, I assure you, the loner souls uh, would be punished very severely for any uh, acting up. I they're, guess that is comforting. They're also underneath uh, a lot of enchantments and layers to be very, very open to um, uh, suggestion. So... Uh, they they, yes. they find it difficult to go on a, against anyone who tells them what to do. We we figured that one out already. Here, though, we uh, we remove those projections and let them enjoy themselves truly. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, yes. Okay. Uh, did you have any more questions about the Loner Soul program? Oh, uh, also, um, for dead adventurers, we also offer the same. So sometimes you might get a dead adventurer. Huh. Ah. We actually find that that's the uh, less popular option, though. I mean, would you really want someone in your line of work who fucked up in the exact same line of work piloting your body through a, d a potentially dangerous area? I mean, I, I guess not, but when they technically have more experience than a criminal in adventuring? I, I guess that depends failed? how they died. That's true. Um, hmm. Uh, she shrugs. Don't ask me, it's just the, the, the polling that our, you know, research division's done. Hmm. I just serve drinks. Oh, and Moonlight is a prostitute. Well. Uh, hmm. That I cannot make comment on. Pay a tip me enough and maybe you can. <laughs> and I look at Karaga and I'm like, help me. Not saying it out loud, but... No, we all heard you. No, I didn't say it out loud. I mouthed it. <laughs> So anyways, now that we're back, what do you guys intend on doing with your reward money? Um, well, first thing, I, I think I'm going to save up to purchase a breastplate. I think that is the wisest thing for me to uh, try and attain. Oh, I was thinking of doing the same thing. Ah, oh, great minds. Uh, to turn in your reward, you guys just have to go to the counter, write a quick report about what you found, because this was an information gathering thing about those goblins, and uh, you'll get paid for it, as well as any rumors or anything else that you want to sell. You just let the receptionist know. Okay. Um. And do I just we just ask for like uh some sort of like is it a pre like 
made form to fill out the report. Then we just ask for one to fill out. Uh, there's no actual form. You just, um, essentially, uh, you get a rock, you talk into the rock about what happened, and the rock gets taken away and replaced with money. I see. I like okay. this. That's, that's much easier. Money rock. The waitress lets you know a lot of adventurers can't read. Ah. That's also, depressing. Also, with the very differing in languages, we just discovered it was easier if people, you know, just spoke. Ah, oh, this is true. This is true. Can... Can, can all of you read? Of, of course I can. I was brought up in the Temple of Ravana. Looking very pointedly at Haja. Haja ah. says, yes, I can. How else do I know what poisons to steal? He says, trial and error. I can't imagine there would be that many failed trials. No, they sometimes usually fail. Sometimes it heals them instead of killing them. When that happens, it's a bit awkward. Oh, I, I half expected that you tested your poisons the same way you would usually seem to test out your new weapons. Oh, no, no. When there's people available, I use them instead. Maybe he did just admit to being a serial killer. What? No. <laughs> All righty, oh, then. Okay. Shall we take our tests, then? Okay. Sure. Let's just pull out our pieces of paper and call it here. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's that's what I was going to say as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you tuned in onto YouTube for us, um, I hope everybody had a fun time. Model definitely doesn't like near the end of the night. I can see that as it goes on, it gets just worse at tracking my eyes. Um, gotta fix that somehow. I hope everyone had fun. I hope my players had fun. Mostly a role play, getting around, wrapping up session. Uh, we're going to do level up tests and then more experience around the city as well as you guys have to figure out your next uh, your next mission. We got some rumors about the things it might be unless uh, outside the city and rumors of what it might be inside the city if you wanted. Remember, this adventure is completely Ooh. freeform, so it is up to you guys to decide what you want to go to and what you want to interact with. You have now also discovered some sort of strange occurrence happening in the kingdom of Agro, this uh, glass uh, thing that you fought. And there's some suspicion that the leader likely escaped instead of dying there. So it's going to be interesting to see where you guys go and what you choose to interact with. And if you wanted to keep pursuing that plot and take adventures that you think might lead to more information on it, or if you choose to do other things. All right, thank you so much for watching us, and do remember that uh, I have slots in open games if you enjoyed this. We will see you uh, next time. Bye for now, guys. Boop. Bye, viewers.